Well, hello everybody. It is Friday morning. You're listening to Prepper Talk Radio. And of course, it's Scott and Shane here in the building. Good morning. We're excited to be here. We're excited to have you guys listening. We're excited that we've been going at this for, we're in our third year, which is crazy. Third calendar, but yeah, it's like 100 and... We don't need to go by the digit numbers. No, we need to go by the, right. We're in our third calendar year, but we're we are having fun behind the desk, behind the mics here at K Talk Radio. That's K T K K. Uh, if you're going to follow us on Twitter, or if you're going to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, it's K Talk Utah. Feel free to join the conversation today by uh, calling in 801-254-1640. And best of all, of course, we're brought to you by us ourselves. And the amazing first aid kits over at Survival Medical. The guys at Survival Medical are doing a great thing. They're, they've created a first aid kit that'll last up to 20 years. Um, Band-aids that'll still stick. Gels that'll still be gel instead of powder. Yeah, I went through uh, getting my daughter ready for girls camp this week and uh, getting her a first aid kit ready. And, of course, going through my old stuff first. That's what I do first. I go through the yep. old stuff first. Out with the old and with the new. Exactly. So I'm going through everything and Band-aids just falling apart. You know, they're just... They're just opening up, but they're just... So I just threw all this stuff away and gave her a survival medical kit. Say, Smart. Take this with you. Good dad. So Great dad. Yeah. Well, today we're, we're actually going to have a lot of fun today. We're, we're, we're shifting gears a little bit. Is that... Yeah, yeah. I guess we're shifting gears a little bit. Yeah, I think we've been, of the, we've been talking a lot about... And I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Scott. We've been talking a lot about... Well, I don't know what to call it. Just We, we haven't, haven't been talking about uh, tasks or doing things or... Or, or actually, actual we've prepping, been talking right? Big picture. We've not yeah, been talking there we go. There we go. little picture. We've not been talking the how to. So today's show is all about the kind of the five minutes of change, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll call it the five minutes of change show, meaning that in five minutes you can do a project, get something done. We're going to give you a lot of different ideas and, and talk about how to do that. But the five minute projects that can get you ahead and get you on your way in the world of prepping. Um, to be more self-reliant, to be more engaged. And, and the nice thing is it doesn't take that much time to get going. Um, you'll find that you get eager to shave off some more time to, to dev- devote to this. You know, I find that uh, if there's a large task that's going to take you know a couple hours or half a day or whatever, I keep putting it off, keep putting it off because uh, I, you know, I just get interrupted and I know it's, I'm not going to get through it. But these you know quick little five-minute things or mm-hmm. even shorter, eh, some are a little longer, but... Uh, things that you can do in between, I don't know, doing the dishes or, or whatever, right? Right. It just right off the top of your head, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. And then, of course, I have some great ideas for, you know, that for projects that take a little bit longer as well. So. Right. Well, I think the, the nice thing is we're going to bounce back and forth in a lot of little topics today. Um, so grab your pen, grab your paper, break them out, right? You should have a pen and paper handy somewhere. Always. Uh, as part of your EDC or your everyday carry, we, we recommend you have a notebook and a pen. Mm -hmm. So pull those out. We're going to want you to take some notes. Um, And if you have a quick five-minute idea as well, give us a call. Plug it in. We'd love to hear from you. You know, again, that on-air number is uh, 801-254-1640, of course, because we're on 1640 here at KTALK. We've we've moved up the dial. So to start it all off, I mean, I've got a huge list. Yeah, me too. But I want to start off with one of the things that people forget about a lot documentation Mm -hmm. oh yeah that's on my list so so number one on my list is is creating your document backups i i love having two types of backups paper and digital Mm -hmm. and so the simplest thing to do is if you've got a scanner if you've got a printer scanner combo at home which is what i do Mm -hmm. you can plug a usb drive directly into it you don't need to have your computer or anything else and there's places you can go and do this as well like the fedex kinkos you can do this as well Take your USB drive. Take all your documents. Driver's load it up license, in the tray. Your so, passport. So here's card. what I recommend: mm-hmm. a copy of every credit card, front and back. Okay. A copy of your driver's license, front and back. A copy of your um, passport. Mm-hmm. A copy of your social security card. Your driver's license. Birth certificate. Birth certificates. Mm-hmm. Um, mortgage documents. There we go. Insurance. Your, your insurance. Documents. Any Maybe any document that you vehicles. use, like titles on your vehicles. Yeah. Um, the you can't you really don't have the deed of your home at least in Utah you don't they record it at the at right. the county level the county. Mm-hmm. Um, but get a copy of all the documents that make sense to you and scan them and put them on this drive but also print off a secondary or, and third copy I like to print off two copies mm-hmm. 
when you're going through this process. And the cool thing is, is you load it up in the tray and the tray just spits everything out. It scans everything as it goes through the system. And it takes you five, 10 minutes to do the whole thing. So it's a quick project. Now you have a backup on a thumb drive. You put that in your backpack. Then you have a, a paper backup, two of them. And what I do is, and this is one of my fun new projects that I'm working on right now is I'm, I've put one of them in my, my binder. I have a little binder that goes mm-hmm. in my other bags. Um, and then the other set I'm actually putting in a PVC roll. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I'm actually, I've made a little do. PVC container with a screw cap on one end, roll everything up, slide it in there and cap it off. And I'm going to bury it. Oh, cool. So that I've got that mm-hmm. there. Cause if there's an earthquake, if something else happens and I can't get to my house, maybe I can get to that. Yeah. Here, here's something you, maybe you haven't thought about. So it's a little cash. You know, maybe you, have you seen that, those papers that you print map on maps on They're waterproof the waterproof papers? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Print everything on those. Now, that kind of takes it out of the five-minute rule. It does take longer. Because you've got to go order that paper because it's very hard to find the paper that I've, I've not been able to find it locally. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I've, have a I went to the World Map Supply Store. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any of it. Oh, really? Okay. So I was like, Rah! but you can order it off of Amazon. So mm, I'm like, okay. yeah, eventually I'll do Get that. Get some ordered and then print everything on your waterproof paper. You can always laminate too. That's true. But then you got to go down and there's another 20, 30 minute minutes. Rule. Right. But these are starters. The whole point behind this is starter ideas. Get mm-hmm. you going. Yeah. Put a little bug in your ear so you can say, oh, yeah, I need to do that. Make, now a, if note, you, make a note. And if you haven't backed up your important documents mm-hmm. in the last six months to a year, you need to get on that right away. Yeah, um, you know, one thing that Scott always likes to do is is print things out and put them in his in his binder. So anything that's important, maybe a how to or or some instructions for something, don't just keep digital copies. Print it off and put it in a binder. Put it somewhere that uh, you know if you've got to leave your house quickly and you need it, you can grab it and and take now, it with you. For example, in my binder, I actually have uh, eighty of the most frequently found plants in Utah mm-hmm. that are edible. Oh, yeah. Right. So color pictures and a description including a description on how to use it because it's a skill that I don't fully have yet mm-hmm. so I'm trying to learn those things so I keep that in my binder as a quick reference once I don't need it once it's committed to memory then I can pull it out of then the binder then you'll forget it again and so absolutely yeah All so right, cool that's I, that's my first one is just getting paper backups and digital backups of, of your documentation um, and put it in safe locations store something off site store something on site store something in your bag mm-hmm. Um, what's the first one you've got? Uh, well, I've got a lot of first ones, but I, I think I'll go with this one. Uh, do you know where your water shutoff valve is in your house? Is it covered up with drywall? Is it behind a cabinet? I mean, do you know where it's at? Uh, does you, Do you need a wrench to turn it off? Most of them have a, have a nice little valve, but And have you homes, turned it off recently to yeah, see if, if it actually works. works? Yeah. You know, we, we found the problem when we bought this house that we're in is, is the – it's a – dial valve mm-hmm. instead of just a 90 lever, degree valve right. exactly i love the lever valve 90 degree it's mm-hmm. easy to know if it's in line it's on if it's against the line it's off yeah the, the but if it's other a, ones if it's like a like a hose bib type valve yeah which, those yeah some older homes that's the way they that's they what i've got mm-hmm. so i'll be swapping that out this this cool. year um but the key i think is it goes back to do you know where it is and do you know how to operate mm-hmm. it and does everyone in the household know how to operate it and same with the gas line as well Mm-hmm. And you will need a wrench for that, so go get a wrench at Emergency Essentials or wherever. You can find them at uh, oh, Harbor Freight, I think, too. They're a couple of bucks. Take a zip tie. And they come with a zip tie at Yeah, Harbor oh, that's Freight. true. They too come with a zip tie. And then take that out to your gas meter, zip tie it to the pipe, and your gas meter is there. So if, when there's an emergency, you, it's right there. You twist it, break it, and you can be ready to turn that gas line off. And additionally with that is also know where your main breaker switch is for your electrical. Yeah, absolutely. So yep. Turn that off as well. That's so true. if there is a disaster, the three things you want to do after you make sure everyone's out of the building and safe, mm-hmm. go turn off the gas, turn off then the go turn off the electrical, then go turn off the water. Yeah, your electrical, when you mean your main breaker on the outside, outside of Outside of the house. house. Right, not your main panel on the inside. You want to do that before you go inside, back inside in case there's electric going and there's a water current hitting it. There we go. Then you're in big trouble. You're safe. If everything that's outside is your gas and your electric. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you've got a water shutoff valve outside. But if it is, it's hopefully buried and it's hard to get to so that no one can just come by and turn it off. But your inside mm-hmm. water valve is just easy. It's right there if you know where it is. And I guess what goes along with that as well, not, not so much go along, but just checking your batteries and your, your smoke alarms. Mm-hmm. Smoke detectors. And those, you know, after, you know, they only have a life, shelf life of about 10 years or so on those things so they should be re- fully replaced 
And usually they're going to keep beeping even if you have new batteries in those things, so then you just need to replace them. Now, I actually had a, uh, a friend of mine just bought these really nice $700 oh, really? systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and the company that sold them on it, they had them put one in the furnace room. Mm-hmm. It's also a CO detector in there. Um, and then they put one in each bedroom. And I'm like, dude, that's a lot of money for mm-hmm. for these. And he goes, well, your typical fire alarm only is good for two years. Two years. And I'm like, what? <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I, I need to do some research on that. But yeah. he, he was talking about how these ones will detect the different types of smoke. Mm-hmm. And if it's a if it's a smoke that's chemical based, it's right. get out faster, right. right? It's it'll trigger sooner, mm-hmm. um, other than just like a wood fire. Um, so it's interesting what you can do, what you yeah. can spend your money on. So definitely educate yourselves on the different types of, of detectors, and and I mean they're pretty expensive. They can be if pretty you expensive, have, especially the good ones. If you have an old home and you've never replaced the detectors, oh, yeah. it's a it's a good time to upgrade them. Priority. Just get new ones. You don't have to go with the seven hundred dollar ones. You can go with the fifty dollar ones, yep. and Redo the whole house, make sure they all have fresh batteries in them, and make sure that your family is a little bit safer. Just, uh, just be. Just and that can turn into a thirty-minute project. Yep, that, that's true. But, but do one at a do time. Do one a day. Five There's five minutes. There, there you we go. go. Boom. Boom. All right, five cool. minutes. Yay! All right, and you know what? The five-minute rule is pretty loose for me. You know, I'm not going to be real picky about it. You know, we play hard and fast, so the the five-minute rule is is definitely a, a loose figure. Mm-hmm. But it's a starting point, and that's the whole focus of today's show is to get you to a starting point, get you something that you can do simply. Get your brain working. Yep. Get away from the TV. Stop listening to that uh, dance music. Well, you're probably this <laughs> right. week, you're probably having a lot of fun. I mean, it's 4th of July. It's yeah. celebrating our independence. Thinking about other you things. You probably had a few two-liter bottles of soda lying around. There we go. Did you save those? Next tip. Did you clean those out, and did you put water Fill in them it, up with water. and then take a Sharpie to it, and Put write the date, the date that it. you filled it in? Stick them in the on the bottom of your pantry. Yep. Or so in the right or in, in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. I like to have water all over the house, so it's easy to get to in mm-hmm. case of a disaster, right? Don't put all your ba- eggs in one basket. Absolutely. You never want to, like, here's the thing that I find that's funny in Utah is everybody puts everything in the their storage cold storage room, room. Mm-hmm. or they have a storage room that's not a cold storage mm-hmm. What the crap? You just created a bunker of f- food that if there is an earthquake, you can't get to. You may not be able to get to it. Yeah, yeah. you may not be able to get to it. Um, the number one area that's hard to get to is that cold storage because it's completely encased in, in concrete, concrete yep. and you've got a steel door. whoop de do. How are, how are you going to get to that if, if something if falls against it and you can't open it up, right? Get get your jackhammer. Like who's got a jack a pneumatic jackhammer? There's another thing. Just make support. sure you have the right tools that will allow you to to cut through your walls and get into your exactly your cold storage. Okay, right, cool. What do you have next? So my next one is actually funny because we just covered it. Cool. But my next one is fire starters. Cool. That's on my list. So and and this is a simple one. Is is creating a tinder box. I mean, you can go pick up a fire starter. There's so many different types, right? You so can get you can get a ferro rod from my favorite one is the Four Directions Bushcraft. Mm-hmm. Um, By far, my favorite. Th- it's phenomenal. Um, you can get one with a fat wood handle, mm-hmm. which I love because you can shave that off for, for tinder, tinder. Mm-hmm. and it's very um, very oily or very sappy, mm-hmm. but yeah. you don't feel that because it's no, dried. It's um, so the pitch content in that's so high that it burns it really a spark really, really easily. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have anything like that, and you've got a lighter, maybe you've got um, a flint and steel. Maybe, you know, there's a, l- a lot of different things that you could have, but do you have a tinder bundle ready to go? You know, there's one idea where you can actually take a um, cotton ball, mm-hmm. dip it in Vaseline, mm-hmm. and then store it in a Ziploc. Make your own. Um, or you can feed them into large straws and then clamp and seal each straw. Yeah, and there's there are a lot of different uh, types of fire starters out there that you can buy commercially. Mm-hmm. I'm not terribly fond of all of them, but there's our music. There's our music. So that this this tip is really simple. Grab the lint trap, get the get everything out of there. Yep, perfect. Use your cotton balls, use your Vaseline. Um, put together a tinder bundle and put it in a tin, a small tin. It doesn't have to be an Altoids can. You can get these tins Something at the like hobby store. We're going to be right back. Check out survival-medical.com while you're on break. Look at all their products on their website. Make sure you get something for your adventures this summer. Well, did you enjoy those commercials as much as I did? I don't think I listened to a single one of them. I know. Kristen walked into the studio and and blasting her loud, fun, bubbly voice, we started talking about diets. Uh, crazy, or crazy. eating properly. Eating, eating properly. Eating properly. How, how exhausting it can be in hot weather here in the 
crazy triple digits that that we're enjoying. Uh, I'm going to say that tongue in cheek. Enjoying, yeah. Enjoying here in Utah right now. Oh, I just don't enjoy the heat. It's but I don't enjoy awful. the cold as much anymore either. So true. I don't enjoy either. It's 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 awful. It really is. Um, thankfully, though. We have air conditioning, which is my favorite invention mm. of all time. Electricity is electricity. probably my favorite invention. <laughs> you know, one of the – well, I don't think electricity is an invention. We just harnessed that power. We just figured out how to, how right? to, how to use it. How air to conditioning, that's a true that's invention. invention. That's, true. that's a true invention. <laughs> Using wonderful things. Oh, yes. Here's, here's a quick five-minute tip. Cool. Um, in the summer, when all the power is out, this is what they do in the south. For air conditioning, mm-hmm. if they don't have electricity, this is what they used to do on the old plantations. They would actually take blankets, whether it was mm-hmm. a cotton linen type blanket or uh, what works best is like a wool blanket. They would get them wet mm-hmm. and then they'd hang, hang them in a, the all the windows and doors yeah. and open those up. Get a cross breeze growing through your house and it'll cool you down by about twenty degrees. There's your uh, swamper. So there's your five your minute cooler. per yes. window. That's solution, totally right? Absolutely. But you want to wring it out. Don't leave it just soaking wet. You okay. want to wring it out, and you'll have to change that usually w- once or twice a day. But that's that's a quick tip that you can do at, during a disaster time to keep your house a little bit cooler. And there are things you can do with five-gallon buckets to make them into kind of refrigerators themselves, too. And so that's mm-hmm. more than a five-minute tip, and I don't have the details with me, but jump online if you need want to make a kind of your own little, yeah, call it a refrigerator. Well, there's this terracotta pot <laughs> version, mm-hmm. you know, and what mm-hmm. it's doing is it's trying to pull – the moisture and the heat out of there and so when you're when it mm-hmm. what it's working on is it by vacuuming the heat out quickly it super cools the ins- interior cool. um really cool you can find videos on it on it on uh, on youtube yeah and I'll pretty much it's impossible to ruin it so every one of the videos that i've seen works really well it's that's yep. how easy it is now let us put a caveat in here we have not necessarily done every one of these things that, <laughs> that we're mentioning today uh they're on our long list. They're on my long list. Let me say that. Uh, especially, you know, I haven't had the need for uh, hanging cotton in front of doors to cool the house down yet. But uh, I've done it on my mission. It? Cool. It worked. In, Flo- in Florida. Uh, in Florida. Now, the fire starters I've done. Yes. The, everything but the buried PVC pipe for the documents right. I've done. I'm finishing that up right now. And you can bury lots of things in PVC. You can bury a ton of things. You can create a really large... Uh, cache, mm-hmm. you know. If, if for those of you who are into geocaching, uh, they take uh, cool items, trinkets, whatever, in a note, and put it into a, either a tube or some kind yeah, of an bin, ammo box or something. an ammo box, yeah. and then they hide it somewhere, and then they tag it. And so then all you other geocachers can go to the geocaching websites, find the tags, and then go f- search for those products. Then you can write on the list, hey, I found it. And many times at the top of a mountain or bottom of a cave, there's a PVC pipe with a register in it where you write your name down. Mm-hmm. Protected from the weather. We've got a lot of friends that do that. I, I don't do that. I, I'm I'm more of a watch a movie kind of guy. <laughs> I need to get out and adventure more. All right, cool. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about fire. Um, uh, I think this is you know we talk about fire all the time. This is this is an important topic. If you don't know how to start a fire, take five minutes and first of all, just take some matches. Take so take a lighter. Yep. Take the basics and start there and learn how to learn how to start a fire. Uh, collect this, the twigs that fall from your tree, right, and learn how to make tinder. That's a, that's an important skill, a five minute skill you could take yep. right there. Is, is go for a little hike and look around. Okay, what can I use for tinder? Collect it, bring it back to the house, and practice. Okay, what test it? See test what it, burns exactly. the best. And, and with different methods, w- whether it's 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 what will catch a spark from your ferro rod, or if, if a lighter or whatever. But go out and collect those, stick them in a ziploc bag, bring them back, and and test and experiment on, on the different types of tinder. That you're just walking along your trail, or even uh, walking around the block, and you see somebody's pl- dry plants or something. There, take take some of that and see how yeah. it'll start. Well, what's funny is, is there's so many different ways you can do this, right? There's no one one oh, way yeah. that everyone yeah. needs to start a fire. I asked this question in in one of the bushcraft groups that I'm in, in on social media, and I'm like, okay, what's your favorite five minute skill for pre- for a preparedness mm-hmm. project project? And I'm like, and it has to be bushcrafting style. Like I wanted all the answers to be, mm-hmm. and funny, I got this answer twice. Is is sticks in a bow drill, mm-hmm. like learning how to carve a notch and cut a dry, uh, cut to t- cut a stick cleanly to create a bow drill. Mm-hmm. It's a five minute project, like mm-hmm. every time. This guy's like, if you can't do it in under five minutes, you shouldn't be doing it. You you need to go home and practice and practice and practice. He's like, I've never had it take more than five minutes. It's a very simple process. Do it. You're done. 
and it, and then it should take about five minutes to start a fire. Yeah, and Tyler really accentuated that last week when talking about uh, mm-hmm. you know the fire making skills that uh, uh, or, or really any skills that don't necessarily take tools that we can we can improvise with. So yep. I think a lot of these skills, just getting in and applying them, are is going to improve our ability to improvise and to open our eyes and see. Oh, I can use that. I can use that. Yep. Uh, and rather than just say, "There's no there's no matches here. How do I start a fire?" You know. Oh, well, it was really amazing when I went to. Um, Hawaii last year went to the Polynesian Cultural Center oh, and yeah. saw how they create fire and they they yeah, their awesome. their tinder bundle is probably the best tinder bundle you'll ever find it's coconut it's the fiber. coconut husk the coconut fiber on the inside and then he w- rubs them in his hands and it just turns into this hairy mess well like on like on uh, on uh, with the Tom Hanks the uh, oh uh, castaway, castaway castaway where he makes a fire that's essentially how they they'll make a fire at PCC. They have yeah. they'll have a, a, a lay stick and then a, sh- and a scrub stick. And mm-hmm. The scrub stick they're just scrubbing it into the lay stick, and they're sitting on the stick that mm-hmm. they're that's l- the lay stick, right? And they're they're creating a groove, and in that groove mm-hmm. they're heating, superheating the little embers, creating the, creating a coal, yeah. right? And they create a coal, and they tip that into the husk, mm-hmm. and the guy just sits there and stands there and holds the husk. He doesn't even blow into it, and he's just like, "Look, there's a husk." In and, less than five minutes, he's, and yeah. and he's just kind of talking and kind of waving it just a little bit, and then all of a sudden he goes. And then there's fire, and he just blows on it once mm-hmm. and moves it quick, and it's like, poof. Yes, yeah, so he's waving, ar- waving it around as getting air. Yeah, getting air. To but it's it. just light mm-hmm. movements. Mm-hmm. But that's it doesn't take a whole lot to get a fire started, and I think that's the point he's trying to illustrate. Mm-hmm. And that's the point we're trying to share as well is it doesn't take a whole lot, but it does take practice. Mm-hmm. You know, he he. It was funny because the guy just cracked jokes the whole time. He goes, he goes, you know, first time I tried this, it didn't work mm-hmm. because I didn't work hard enough. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah, that's the point. You, if you don't work hard enough, if you don't practice, if you're not diligent in trying, you're never going to get there. You just so, take five minutes here and there to, to practice it. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it doesn't take all day. I mean, just take a few t- few times a week, carve it out. If you don't have five minutes, it's because you're filling your time with something that's not important. Mm-hmm. Like Facebook. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so yeah. okay, so okay. going back to fire starting, other right, other methods. I think the best, and most simplest, or most uh, easily accessible for everybody is to have a have one of those little bic lighters. Just have bic lighter. Yep. Throw it in your bags. And the brand bic is we purposefully say bic because bic is the best brand for those disposable lighters. Mm-hmm. Period. The other ones that t- typically have a, a narrower wall and they crack really quickly. Mm-hmm. And they'll lose, or, the, or, it's, yeah. or it's or it's not one single cast piece. It's two pieces glued together, and that glue and falls apart. Falls apart, and then it leaks out the bottom. So you got to watch out for that. So spend a few cents more and get a big one. Yeah, instead two of the, to three cents more. The store brand, absolutely. Um, get those. Always have one in your car. Always have one in your bags. I mean, it's just you can't have enough yep. of them. So there's a five minute one. Get a get a lighter and wrap some duct tape around it. Stick, yes, stick it in your bag because duct tape is the universal fix all, mm. pretty much. Um, <clears throat> another thing is the same thing with a, um, a prescription bottle. I love doing oh, this. Yep. Mm-hmm. Take your prescription bottle, uh, wrap it in duct tape. Mm-hmm. You know, this it'll take you ten minutes. Just, I like more duct tape, but take it, fill it with cash, mm-hmm. small bills, and then throw that in your bag because I have one on a console and car. One in my bag, mm-hmm. so that if something does happen, I've got small bills that I can use the cash to mm-hmm. get to where I need to go. That's a good idea. You know, what I was thinking is, oh, create a little fishing kit. Take a yes. take one of the larger prescription bottles and build a little fishing kit in there. Wrap some duct tape around it. But uh, this will take you a little bit more time, unless you already have a tackle box. If you get mm-hmm. your tackle box, all the supplies, break it down into smaller quantities, and build a little fishing kit in uh, in, a, in a small uh, prescription bottle. And it doesn't take much. I mean, ten feet of line. We'll get you a fishing kit, mm-hmm. right? Like Twenty, thirty, it's even pole. better. But you don't need to do much, and you can even just fish right off, uh, right out of your hand out with that bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, loop it around the bottle yep. and just stand there and wait. That's true, right around the the prescription bottle itself. So, that, I, I, that's a great idea, a little fishing kit. I should probably do that this week. I've got some extra, extra bottles. Fish, yummy. Hmm. Fish. Fish. Okay, so another thought I had is some, you know something again five minutes or so. Uh, Shelter. Obviously, we talk about shelter an awful lot. Um, <clears throat> fire being one of the uh, kind of the elements of shelter. But uh, take if you don't have a tarp, if you don't have a, a, a shelter specific tarp or something like that, take maybe an emergency blanket or or take a sheet out of your closet. Go in your backyard and try and build a shelter with it. Yeah, you know? a, a simple lean-to. Yeah, get, get right? some cordage. 
get some yeah. sticks, you know, whatever you might make find some around cordage the with the vines grown in the. What, what's that vine we have everywhere here? It's just uh, invasive and annoying. Oh, oh um, I'm, I know what you're talking about. It's a ground cover. Drives me nuts. We had it in my house. Diddly morning nightshade? Glory. Is that what you're talking about? No. Well, okay. <laughs> anyway. Morning glory. Oh, no. morning glory. Is that what it is? is? That what it, I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I need to get boned up on my plants, but oh. it was in my house in Murray. We had it everywhere, and so I'm like ripping it up out of these bushes. Mm-hmm. And you'd have 15 foot you strips. Use it for lashing, and you could lash them into into groups. And I actually tried to use that for cordage, and it worked. Yeah, you improvise you know? as much as you can, and then learn. Okay, this didn't work. What am I going to try next? Because you know, mm-hmm. that's what it is. It's an exercise in learning. And you know, okay, if I'm in an emergency situation, what can I scrounge up to make a quick shelter to get us out of the rain or whatever, or the wind or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. So I think that's a really cool five-minute thing that you can just learn to improvise with. Mm-hmm. Go grab the shower rod. Grab the shower curtain, right? Go in your backyard, build the shelter out of it. Great idea. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. And, and shelter isn't always a physical structure. Shelter can also be your clothing. Mm-hmm. Shelter can also be a fire, right? But a fire is also a friend. It also gives you that psychological mm-hmm. edge. But try creating each, each and every one of those. You know, so give yourself a challenge one weekend. Shut the power off and, and go live in the backyard and see how well you fare. Yeah. So here's here's another five minute, I guess. Yeah. Is take that jacket, take those shoes and socks, put them in a bag, stick them in your car. Right? So you, you've you got room in your trunk. Your trunk's empty, right? Hopefully it's not empty. Mine's, you know, packed full of stuff. Uh, there's no reason not to have stuff in your trunk. Take some time to put stuff in your trunk that can help you survive if you have to leave your vehicle behind. Right. So good it's basically creating a car kit, mm-hmm. right? Hopefully you've got your 72-hour kits, uh, that, and I use that as a term, not as the actual definition. Mm-hmm. Mine is a 96-hour kit for two, right? So I've got enough supplies to get two people through for 96 hours. Now alone, I shoot, I'm good for a week or so mm-hmm. because I don't have to eat it all. I don't have to use it all, but I've got a renewable water source. I've got filters. I've got a Sawyer Mini. I've got a Life Straw in the other bag. I've got all these different little tools and 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 things so you add on to that by having the car kit right the car kit gives you mm-hmm. stuff you don't have to carry everywhere you're going so you don't have to have it in a backpack mm-hmm. have it in a bag have it in a bucket have it in a box have it in something yeah, and five keep gallon it in the bucket. car yeah lay it on its side put a little block underneath it so it doesn't roll around every time you corner mm-hmm. and that could be an easy five minute uh, thing is grab a bucket if we don't have one next time you're at walmart go by and grab a five gallon bucket, make that your shopping cart, your shopping cart, your shopping uh, uh, bag or whatever, and then buy it when you leave, and and don't forget a lid, and then yeah, and then make that your your car kit or or whatever you need. So uh, and make sure that the lid seals very well. Made that mistake. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I bought a bucket from a food storage place. It was a six gallon bucket with a s- different size lid, and I was like, oh, I've got a lid at home yeah, a for a five gallon bucket. And it was slightly smaller than the six-gallon bucket. And I was, this was years ago. Now they're the same size. But make sure that what you're getting, it, it all works together. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you're in for a rude, rude surprise. Um, another fun one with the shelter is, is actually, so you can take a tarp. You can take all these other things and build something. But go, go actually try to build a debris shelter. Mm-hmm. This will take more than five minutes. Oh, yeah. But this is Maybe after you. Maybe five days or. Well, you can make a, a basic lean-to in six hours, mm-hmm. right? But make something. Start learning how things work together because then that will take your tarps to the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, but go out and, and do the tarp. Do your Mylar blanket. Put a rock in each corner, then wrap it around with cordage so that you've actually got something to tie it to because they don't have rivets. They don't have anything to lash mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Um, there's creative ways you can really do anything. So you can even use your blanket off of your bed yeah you know anything try it that's the number one most important thing is to try it become it a, a child shot. again and just goof around with all the stuff you have and and, and I, I see my kids grabbing stuff and going outside what are you taking that outside for what are you doing well and that's they're Dan just White. inventing they're, they're, there you go dan they were just just messing around with things and trying to figure things out and yeah our good friend dan whiting i mean he's 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 a grown-up kid in the in the wild <laughs> yeah, he is you know <laughs> when he's when he's not running around in loincloth He's he's a really intelligent guy to talk to, and and the fun thing is is he's always got the most basic skill utilizations that can adapt into a hundred different things, mm-hmm. and that's what we need to be doing. And, and the only way to do that is to try them, 
mm-hmm. to play around with it, to learn what works and what doesn't work. You know, and I, I think, you know, when we've talked about fire, I mean, there's so many different things you can do going back on fire. Find out what works for you, what you like best, and utilize yeah. those things. If you're not trying it, if you're not building a shelter, if you're not building a fire, if you're not practicing these skills, they're all going to fall away. They're all going to disappear. No, they will. It's not quite the same as riding a bicycle. You have to hone those skills and keep those those skills sharp. Same thing with your mind. You've got to keep your mind sharp. Keep the content flowing. And if you're not learning, you're losing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. I've got uh, over well, almost on a break here, so we'll get started on this one and then maybe come back after the break. Uh, one thing I think you can do really quickly and really easily is look at your front door, right? Mm-hmm. Look at your front door and open the front door. Look at the hinges. Look at the the latch plates. Yep. What kind of screws are in those? Are they really short ones that came the with the quarter door? Three-quarter inch screws. Like three-quarter inch tiny little screw that only attaches to the case it's casing itself. Uh, to, to secure that door, to make that door nice and strong, very quick, very easy, pull those out and put in some three-inch long lag screws, whether they're grabbers or if they're more specific to latch doors, which, are, which is a higher grade uh, of screw specifically for doors and latch plates. Uh, replace those really tiny short screws with long lag screws. It'll make your door so, so, so much stronger, and it's really, really quick and really easy to do. Yeah, that's, that's easily a five-minute. You don't have to replace every screw. No. No, exactly. If you do one or two screws per hinge mm-hmm. and then two screws in the in, in the, the plate, plates. Mm-hmm. you're good. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so you're not having to completely remove the door. You're leaving the door up. Yep. And you're swapping a few things. Hey, we're running out of time. We're, we're going to be back after the break. We've got a caller that we'll bring on after the break as well. But you're listening to Prepper Talk Radio brought to you by Survival Medical. That's survival-medical.com. Well, welcome back to Prepper Talk Radio. Scott and Shane here, brought to you by Survival Medical. That's survival-medical.com. First aid kits, tougher than nature. And you know what? I like to call it first aid evolved. Mm-hmm, yes. It's first aid kits that will last up to 20 years. We've actually got a caller, Steve. Let's bring Steve on the air. Try again there. there we go. Steve, are you there? Yeah, good Good morning. I just have a, a quick question and a comment. Sure. Uh, a, a while back you had... A, a show about preparing for, um, you know, being off the grid or whatever in emergencies and using, um, like, um, portable toi- um, toilets and whatnot. Sure. And I I think I read something or heard it on the Internet or something like that, that an alternative for toilet paper is foam books. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I wanted your thoughts on that because a couple things is they're free and storing toilet uh, packages of toilet paper can be very cumbersome and mm-hmm. and take up a lot of space and and uh, the phone books seem to be I don't know how well they work because I've never tried one but <laughs> they seem they, pretty compact and, and they're free and they I just work really them. well they do leave a huh? little bit of ink smudge on your butt um, <laughs> I'll be honest here I have used them I've tested those out. Okay. Um, and they store easy. I mean, you just put it in a high place to keep them dry. That's that's it. Right. Phone books have a lot okay. of uses as well. They're actually yeah. very good at stopping bullets. Yes. Of oh. course, you can use it to uh, uh, start a fire, obviously. Of course. Um, so they you know, they have multiple uses. So I kind of like phone books, you know, other than I just usually throw it right in the recycle bin. And if you're ready to make it. a paper mache outfit for your kid to play with. There you go. There you go. Phone you can book make works a, great Make a them. helmet. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, other thing is, uh, a while back you were talking about... Uh, uh, in a bug out situation, heaven forbid, we have to bug out the home, and you have that big seventy-two hour pack or whatever that a person might have a bug out bag that's big and too hard to carry uh, on your pack. Yeah. Um, I thought I had a while back that I, I've never seen this, this on the internet, but like uh, I I picked up a couple of used golf carts from a se- second hand store. Oh yeah. For like yeah, five yeah. or ten bucks. I chose those because they're narrow, mm-hmm. uh, they were cheap, and they have very sturdy wheels. They're pretty lightweight. And then you can just, and they're lightweight, yeah. and you can strap your big pack on there, and you know, with a couple of uh, bungee cords or whatever, and then just roll it down the road if needed. That's brilliant. That's a really good idea. I salute you, sir. See, I carry a okay. small collapsible dolly. <clears throat> excuse me, oh. in my in my car, you know, just to kind of get it like Home Depot. Um, they're not. They're really small wheels, so they're obviously not great for off road, but. But that would be a great idea for for off road or anything. Well, yeah, and okay. you can even add add tread to those tires with just the simple shoe goo that you can use mm-hmm. to improve your shoe and fix your tread. You can add that to add bigger knobby or tread if you really want to go nuts and go off road. You know, 
that's not that you idea. really want it because you're dragging it, but still. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I think, I think that's a fantastic idea, I think it's definitely idea, important if, if you're going on foot to have something to pull behind you or, or push in front of you because uh, you just can't carry enough stuff on your back if you have to bug out like that. So definitely lay those plans, figure out. You know, yeah, look on KSL for, for uh, those golf carts. That's a great idea. I have a feeling they're going to disappear real quick now. <laughs> Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's, that was fantastic. You know, it's funny because, you know, we think of a lot of different things, but everyone we talk to always has a different idea that could work. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that that one has wheels. It'll roll. That's a good idea. <laughs> that's good. You know, and it's it's not a long project to be able to take mm-hmm. one of those carts and strap your bag to it, find a way that secures your bag correctly. You know, I've got, uh, you know, a cart you can get at the... Uh uh, the hardware store, you know, that's got pretty big wheels, just kind of an off, off-road off cart for yard work. And that's, you know, something I think would work really well to, to haul some pretty good weight on down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then there's a lot of the different things out there that are made specifically for preppers to yep. bug out on, you know. Uh, kind well, of there's a bicycle really wheel. expensive ones. Yeah, that bicycle yeah. wheel one is pretty expensive. There's there's also really in- inexpensive ones. You can get those kid carrier. Get a used kid carrier and oh, yeah. strap a handle onto it, and now you can carry that. No, that's a good idea, too. You know, or you can tie it to your bike. or I mean, not tie it to your bike, but it collects, connects mm-hmm. to your bike. Um, but you can find other ways to repurpose those. I mean, that's the whole idea is be creative. Repurpose whatever you can find to have two, three, four other purposes so make life easier. Yeah. You know, five-minute projects. I mean, one of the five-minute projects we wanted to talk about today is, is knife sharpening. Mm-hmm. I think it's a skill that's forgotten. You know, I, I was at my mother-in-law's house the other day, and she's like, yeah, i got to send my knives in to get sharpened. And I'm like, excuse me, what? Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I need to send my knives in to get sharpened. I'm like, why? Well, if you're, they're your kitchen knives and you want them really sharp, yeah, that's that's a difficult thing to learn and to, to actually get a really good edge. It takes some talent and some skill to get a really sharp edge on a nice kitchen knife. It doesn't take that long to learn, though. No, it doesn't. You know, it just growing takes, up, see, I grew up in a household where my dad... Mm-hmm. Every few months was sharpening, sharpening all knives. the knives, mm-hmm. and I mean he he was he's a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad's a, a craftsman. He's a, a contractor, is what you'd call him. But he's he's a master craftsman, and so mm-hmm. he could build anything out of wood that you need to build. I mean, he even built a broadsword out of wood f- as a as a demo mm-hmm. item for uh, for playing Captain Moroni in the primary program as a kid. But I mean, he did he can build anything. But he would even sharpen all the serrated edges Mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to learn how to do that go get a cheap set from di there you go yeah and practice you can put a phenomenal edge on there with practice Mm. you know and the best is you know get an oil stone Mm -hmm. that's how you really get something super sharp Mm -hmm. with a very fine edge Mm -hmm. you know a wet stone's great an oil stone stone's a little bit better um but work your way up to learn those things and those don't take much time to figure out. And it's true because and the, the EDC knife you have in your pocket doesn't need to have that kind of a, a kitchen sharp type edge on it, right? Right. So <clears throat> there are very simple tools you can get out there, very inexpensive. Uh, you know, there's the Smith's brands. There's a bunch of different brands where all you do is, is pass it through a uh, kind of a carbon edge mm-hmm. to, to help take off any burrs or whatever and then use a ceramic edge to polish it. Uh, or... You can get diamond stones and, and, and get better edges on it. So, But it does take some practice, take some it time. So, it's so not something you can just go out and do on your first try. Right. You know, you'll find that you'll mess up the edge geometry the first try. One of the things I found for me when I'm, part, when I'm sh- sharpening my pocket knives, I'll just run a Sharpie along the side of it, along yep. the edge, mm-hmm. so that I know that I'm keeping the edge geometry correct as I go through my first two passes. I'll see if I'm wearing one side of the Sharpie or off or not. Mm-hmm. And if I if I am, then I know, oh, my angle's off. And so I can adjust and correct that. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, each knife has a slightly different angle to the to the grind of a blade. Yep. Uh, anywhere from, you know, 17 to 20, 21, to somewhere around there. 20 is pretty common. Uh, and there are guides you can get to help you hold that angle to make sharpening easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, those ten- tools tend to be a little more expensive and harder to pack around. I don't ha- I don't carry that kind of kit with me right. in my, my bag. I have a basic, and I like to use the uh, a. It's a round bar. It's a diamond yep. bar. So diamond bars are great. It's, it collapses, slides in on itself. I can, I can stick it in a pocket. It's fairly lightweight, and it becomes. It's really quite easy to then sharpen a knife. You know, kind of like you see in the movies. They have the kitchen knife, and they have the big round stick, and they're they're uh, sharpening one side, then the other. Uh, 
you know, kind and of that's like your typical diamond stick. Yeah, and that's right. a that is a really quick, easy way to sharpen a knife and give it a pretty good edge. A re- it can give it a really good edge. Let's take this other caller. Hey, thanks for calling K Talk. You're on the air. What do you got for us today? Uh, I called in a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm just an old farmer from down here in, in American Fork. I aspire to be a farmer. I, truthfully, I, I, that's where I'm headed. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, are you guys taking any more calls? Yeah, absolutely. yeah you're on the air. Us. Yeah, we, we got you live right now. Oh, wow. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, there was another farmer that called in right after me. And when I get off the air, maybe if he calls, calls in or listening, I'd like to talk to him. But, you know... I've kind of been forced into this being homeless for like uh, almost 20 years now. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to prepare for every everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like if you get a 96-hour kit, you know, what do you do after that 96 hours? Yep. You've you got nowhere to go. And that's the whole you purpose know. of anything you're, you're creating is you want, it's, it's getting you to the next point. And hopefully that next point yeah. isn't, you know, homelessness, mm-hmm. but it's hopefully get you to where you can get aid or get help because really well, none of us can survive alone. Oh, well, that's kind of what I was getting at, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like if everybody don't work together, and it, I, I guess it would be hard to tell, you know, who was friend or who was foe. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I aspire to be a farmer as well. I mean, uh, probably not a full-time farmer, but I aspire to have my own farm so that I can live long-term on my own terms. Yeah, and I'm even actually kind of worried about the farmers that are farmers now. You know, it's like uh, you go around the valley now, there's one thing or maybe two things growing, hay and mm-hmm. maybe a little corn. bit of corn, corn and yep. barley, but that's, uh, that's it. There's that's virtually true. no vegetables anymore or mm-hmm. anything like that, you know. Yeah, we we've kind of abandoned. It's in, it's amazing. We've kind of abandoned as a nation the idea of creating and providing for ourselves. You know, one thing I do love about summer are the fruit stands, the vegetable stands, because there are some yeah. pretty good uh, local farms that mm-hmm. produce some really nice vegetables and such. So uh, we definitely need more of those. We need to have those for ourselves. Have our own gardens that way. But that's one thing I love about this heat is that the crops are growing well. We're getting some awesome tomatoes and some really great vegetables. So take head advantage. up head up north to uh, to uh, Bear Lake. Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh. Mm. raspberries, <laughs> raspberries, and raspberry shakes, raspberry jam. I, I I go gaga when I get up there. It's amazing. But I, I think you're both right. I mean, we're just we're not getting enough. Um, we're kind of losing out on what we could be growing. Um, crops well, not- are getting simplified and, and it's only for the livestock really anymore mm-hmm. and that's all we're doing is we're growing food for livestock we're not growing food for us that's true yeah it's not not only that the whole uh what should i say the um economic system around here is like all the wells the, the groundwater mm-hmm. it's just all you know they i, I know where there's fresh wells everywhere you know, at the UTA track, it went right down where all the wells were. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, and I think, another so, reason why I want to farm as well, so that I can have my own well, my own water source that nobody else can influence, right? I mean, it's it's, it's my water. Nobody's going to interrupt it. And all, all these storm drains, they they get no oxygen, you know, because the open running ditches or it goes, it goes back in the ground, and then mm-hmm. they go right in that lake. And it's, yeah, I hadn't I, thought about I, that. I, that's true. I've watched those. That lake just totally changes. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite disgusting. Thank you so much for your call. We appreciate it. Yeah, you. thank you. Yeah, you Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. All you right, know, in the last few minutes, what should we wrap up with here, Scott? I was going to put the pressure on you, but uh, oh, okay, okay. going back on the binder. <laughs> oh, here, here's something, here's something okay. real quick. Uh, our previous caller, he talked about uh, sanitation, right, using, mm-hmm. using a phone book. Take a five-gallon bucket and make a quick uh, emergency toilet with it. Okay. Take a pool noodle. Right, cut wrap it, it around the open, edge. Open, cut it, cut it open. Wrap it around the edge. You can sit on use use a garbage bag. And that'll that'll be the nice thing about that noodle is it'll hold the garbage bag in place. Mm-hmm. Right, so it doesn't stick to your rear when you stand up, and mm-hmm. you don't walk away with your yeah yeah yeah. And then of course you're at in that you're maybe you're you're creating f- some fire to cook over. So use some of those ashes to sprinkle on your yeah. Throw uh, the in the throw the white ash in there. That's where the lie is. And that'll uh, yeah get rid of the get rid of the smell. 
And now the other thing you can do is, and this is this is a project I did a little while ago, is you know those bug spray bottles? Bug spray bottles. Though you can air pressurize oh, yeah, yourself, okay. mm-hmm. and you can use those oh, yeah, to spray yeah, yeah. your bugs around mm-hmm. the yard. or you can I mean, you can use it to spray pressure, anything. Pressure, it's a pressure yeah. can, right? Mm-hmm. You can actually modify that into a bidet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or so, shower. Or shower. Yeah. You know, just take take a, a a hot kind of a blow dryer. I guess you could you could use that as well. Mm-hmm. But a uh, hot air gun. Sorry, that's what I was looking for. Hot air, hot air gun. Warm up the tube. Bend it to the der- the angle or degree you want, mm-hmm. so that you can use it on yourself. Um, one of the most sanitary ways to go, and you're not using paper. You can just use purified water every time. Long term solution. So we're out of time. Thanks for listening to Prepper Talk Radio, brought to you by Survival Medical, Survival Medical dot com. We'll be back next Friday. It's going to be fun. We'll miss you until then. Yeah, the point is just get out and do something.